G'day, I'm Yuki Sandev, and in part 11 of this series, Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will be continuing on with our first simple game. Alrighty, so this is a continuation from part 10 of the series. This is the second part to our first simple game. The link for part one of the game is on the top of your screen right about now. So we have already made our falling objects, which we have called enemies, and we've made them spawn in random locations and move downward toward where the player would be. So today we will get a player organized and continue on from there. So let's get into it. So as in the previous video, we grabbed a package from the Unity asset store to make our enemies. And today we're going to do the same for the player. So let's click Window and then Asset Store. Should open the Unity Store in your default web browser. For the player, I'm going to use Rigged Stylized Green Cartoon Ant Character. If you search for it, it should be there and it should be free. I will leave a link in the description for it too. And just in case you have problems finding it, the package is available in my GitHub link. If you do get it from my GitHub link, then after you download it, double click it and select open with Unity to import it. But do try to get it from the asset store first. Now, as long as you are logged in, you should be able to add it to my assets and then select open in Unity and then select download, then select import. And then the second import screen is just for you to only select certain items from the package. We are going to import everything, so just click import again and close the package manager. All right, so drop down the ants folder in your project and then drop down prefab. Drag the ant prefab into your hierarchy and let's rename it player. And do the usual reset, it's transform and scale it down to 0 0.5. All right, now let's use the move tool to drag him down to the bottom of the screen. Now we need to give it a collider as well. So click add component and box collider. Click the collider edit tool as we did with the enemy. And we just have to make sure that the collider surrounds the ant need to jump out of 2D mode and double click the player to zoom in and edit. Okay, I think that should about do it. Uh, we can always tweak it later anyway. Uh, so double click the main camera to zoom out and back into 2D mode. Alrighty, so now we need a script, of course, for the player, so we can move it right and left. So click your scripts folder and create a new script. And let's call it player. And drag the script onto your player object in the hierarchy. And just double check it's in there. Cool. So now double click your player script to open it. Okay, we want the player to move left and right, so let's do that. Uh, first, we'll need our usual speed variable. So let's type in public float speed equals 10. And we'll need a variable for horizontal movement. So let's type in private float horizontal. Right, so we're going to use transform obviously for movement. So in your update method, type in horizontal equals input dot get axis horizontal. And transform dot translate vector three dot right times time dot delta time times speed times horizontal. So you should be familiar with transform.translate from part seven of the series. So I won't go into detail there and that's it. So let's save and double check that we can move and run. Cool. We're moving. 
Okay, so moving is good, but when we get to the uh, screen edge, we can keep going off the screen. Uh, that's no good. So we'll have to set some boundaries. Uh, we can just use the same boundary as we used for enemy X uh, spawn. The boundary was 9.6, so let's get back in the script and make that a boundary. All right, so first off, let's make a variable to store that boundary number. And let's make it public just in case we need to tweak it later. So type in public float boundary equals 9.6 if. Cool. Now in update, let's put an if statement to say if the player reaches this boundary, then don't go any further. So type in if transform.position.x is greater than boundary. Then in between the curly brackets, type in transform.position equals new vector 3 boundary, comma, transform dot position dot y and now you can copy that whole if statement and paste it below and change the greater than sign to the smaller than and put a minus in front of boundary on both lines alrighty so the first if says if the x position of our player gets to greater than 9.6 then its position is 9.6 so it can never get any further and whatever happens, keep the Y position the same. And again, I left out the Z uh, because it's zero. Remember the previous video, you can leave out the Z if it's zero, which it is. And the second if statement is for the left side. So it happens if the X position gets smaller than 9.6, uh, minus 9.6. Uh, and notice we put the minus before the variable name to make it negative. Okay, let's save this and give it a test. Cool, we can't get off the screen. Here's a cool thing to try. Back in your script, in the two new vector lines, put a minus before the first boundary and take the minus away from the second one. This will make the character restart at the other side when the boundary is reached, so your player can scroll to the edge and then kind of like teleport back to the opposite side. All right. We have the objects falling and we have a moving player. Now we need to put in a condition that when the player hits the enemy or the enemy hits the player, uh, they die. So we could put this condition either in the player script or the enemy script. Um, let's put it in the player script. So double click your player script to open it again. Okay, so here comes something new. Just before the last curly bracket in the script, uh, type in on call. And if you are using Visual Basic, it will give you shortcuts. Uh, you can press the tab key or click with your mouse to select on collision enter, and it will finish the rest of it off for you. If you didn't get the prompt, then you will have to type it in as you see it here. Alrighty, now in between the curly brackets, type in destroy collision dot game object. So this is a built-in function that will only be called if our player collides with something. In this case, the only thing that the player can collide with is the enemy. So we simply put in the statement destroy collision dot game object. The blue collision spelled with a small c is whatever we collided with. So our enemy will be destroyed. Uh, let's save this. And run. So let's wait until the player hits a piece of cake. Boom, cake destroyed. Alrighty, let's get back in the script and destroy the player as well. So under our first destroy line, type in destroy game object. So this just simply destroys the player. We don't have to specify anything here because the script is attached to the player. So just like in our enemy script, it destroys itself. All right, let's save this again and run. Waiting for the player to hit the cake. Cool. Player and enemy gets destroyed. So now what? We can't do anything. The player's disappeared. So let's restart the game. So get back into your player script. All right, time for something new again. 
So way back in part six of the series, I briefly mentioned the libraries at the top of the default script. Well, we're going to add one today. So under the using Unity engine, type in using Unity engine dot scene management. And this is going to allow us to control our scenes. Now underneath our destroy code on collision, type in scene manager dot load scene bracket speech mark gameplay in speech mark in bracket. So now when the player gets hit or dies, the game will reload and the entire scene will start over. Remember we named our scene gameplay. Another way to write it could be also scene manager dot load scene zero. Zero being the index of the first scene. Let's save our script and get back into the editor and I'll show you what I mean. Click file and select build settings. Now click add open scenes. So now you'll see your scene name and the index is zero. If you added a second scene, then the index for the second scene would be one and so on. Right, let's close this and test the game. Yep, as soon as we hit the enemy, the game resets. Cool. So we have the basic gameplay idea set and it's running. Um, we need to spruce it up. But I think we'll do a little more to it and stop for a new and more complex game. So yep, there is going to be a third video on this puppy. And as always, please don't hesitate to ask me something. Uh, some parts of this might have seemed too quick and not explained in depth. So if it wants a video, I will make one. And I will try to get this part three out as soon as possible. Uh, so in the meantime, let's recap today. So we got another model from the asset store and added it to our scene. We made our player move with transform.translate and gave it some boundaries to stop it disappearing off the screen edge. We used a built-in function on collision enter to detect a collision between the player and the enemy. We told the script to destroy the player and what it collided with. And we referenced a new library for scene management and got scene to reload when the game's over. So the next video will be continuing on with this, obviously. Um, off the top of my head, I think we will have a score and display the score, have a game over restart button, put a few more enemies in an array, and whatever else we have time for. So I hope to see you in the next video.